Okay. I'm going to take you on a little tour through the Boundary Museum. You may be the last people I do tour through the Boundary Museum. It's been the best part of my job, touring people through, and I'll have to keep this brief, but this is the Boundary Museum here. As you come in, you notice we have a basement as well as an upstairs. Donation box, people are glad to donate to us. You see all these? These are from the school children because we do tours. We tour school children through here. These are the thank yous that they send us. But we don't do that in tourist season. We just don't. I mean, if we're not open in tourists, if we're only open in tourist season, we won't be touring any more kids. So anyways, carrying on. There's all the mares. Sorry, Neil, didn't get your picture up in time. And here's our gift shop. It's a bit lame. Yeah, it's a bit lame. But then again, we're not really in this for the profit, are we? We had books here produced by other people, calendars. We have books produced by us. We have these models here, dioramas of 1913 Grand Forks. The museum doesn't exist then, of course. Just about building the new hospital down here. The courthouse exists. The Winnipeg Hotel exists. Where the bylaw was, that's where the train station was. That was the post office. Now it's City Hall. This model over here, that's of Chinatown. We used to have a Chinatown here. We don't anymore, but it was right at the Forks. Now, the Gyro Club. This chapter no longer exists, but the Gyro Club is responsible for this museum. They raise the money to get the grounds. They raise the money to put the building up. And that was their legacy. Now, this fine bear here and other friends of his, as you can see up here, they're carved by a man who lives here now. This is probably going to be where he ends his life. He wasn't born here, didn't grow up here, but he's a resident here and these are all hand carved. We used to have the United Church exhibit in here, but it was taken down, it was its time. Now, this is basically the furthest back we go, a native exhibit. We actually have a Clovis point in here. We have a canoe that was found, we figure 125 years old, it was found at the bottom of the river. <clears throat> in the Kettle River above the Cascade Canyon. We have all these things here. There's my coworker. I'm back on the list. Okay. So, infamous incidents. Death over potatoes. Yes. The dragon, side lock, flint lock pistol. You know, I wondered why it was called a dragon. I thought, well, dragoons I know about, but dragon? Yeah, but it turns out that the dragoons who are mounted infantry are called dragoons because they use the dragon flintlock pistol because it belches flame like a dragon fire breathing. It's attacking you, and, and that's why they're called dragoons. So, hey, I learned lots of things working here. Early school days. All the old school kids. School things. The bell, the ink wells, the slates, I remember having those. A little diorama here, it's not plugged in, of, of what the first schoolhouse looked like. And you can't quite see inside all that well, but there. We used to have a display here. It was my computer, so it's gone. World War II military wireless set. More sculptures, these wolves and, and this creation here from our local wood sculptor. A peerless mangle. A sporting display. Skates, a sled, an old catcher's mitt, an old rock. Apparently this rock here, this curling rock, is four pounds heavier than current regulation rocks because that's the way they were in the old days. Old days. The Hockey Boundary Champions, 1914. Now, we've tried to put in more displays covering other areas of the boundary. We don't have that many artifacts from them, but we put in for something for Carmi and B.V. Dell down here. We put something in for Christina Lake Cascade, Greenwood, Midway, and Eholt, Rock Creek, Bridesville, and Westbridge. 
because they're in the boundary too. Now, if you look over here, these coach la carriage lanterns were Hearst carriage lanterns from the early 1900s, originally candle lit. So these are real things. They aren't things that you buy at uh, Home Depot that look nice. Our photo gallery here. Organized by what the topic is. Agriculture, railway and transportation, the Duke of Boys, other people, recreation, residences, railroads, etc. Upstairs we have our archives. And that's our office space that Greg did his job. Now, we've had some leakage here. So that's why this is here, buckets here. I'll take you up to the archives later on. Going back into the display area, the logging industry, which was really big in the early part of and throughout most of the history of this town. And if you look in this display, you can see that picture right there. Look at how big those logs are. You just don't get those anymore unless they're at the bottom of a lake. Pioneer tools. Pioneers, well, that was the early part of this town's history. Pioneers. The medical exhibit. Tends us to gross people out. I don't know why. But then again, maybe I'm just weird. Examination table. And mannequin standing in for a doctor. This dentist drill was uh, a replica made by previous people at the museum. And we have some artifacts here, a piece of slag and a, a brush hook and a few other things. A, a whistle, a steam whistle, a spike from the railway, <coughs> gold panning, because mining was really, really big here, and technology then and now, which is the display that I actually worked on the very first one I was here. And I sold gramophone, all the old typewriters, different kinds of typewriters. This one they call the Iron Butterfly because of the way that it looks. The, the strikers are off on the side, almost like wings of a butterfly. This one's a blind typer because it strikes from the bottom. You can't even see what you're typing. This mechanism down here with the tubes and this amplifier and that big horn does the same job as that little transistorized thing here. They're a speakerphone for your phone. Switchboard. We have two sections to the switchboard. The very first devices that you could record and playback sound on. Thank you, Mr. Edison. Early telephones. There's no dial. I had fun explaining how this works and explaining that that phone numbers were invented by a doctor and telephone dials were invented by a funeral home director. Who knew? This is the computer end of things and. Well, gee, not a lot of computer stuff was actually, you know, old enough to be in a museum. So a lot of this stuff is from my own personal collection of things. Uh, motherboard's mine, the calculator's mine, the MP3 player's mine, the disc player was my wife's, this was mine. Lots of things. An abacus. Apparently that abacus there was used at the bank to handle Chinese accounts. We had a bit of a, an area here where kids could do things. We had created 3D viewer pictures, and we also had red, green sunglasses pictures in 3D, which were running on this display here on a computer, which was my personal property, so now I've taken it back. Another fine piece of sculpture by a local sculptor. The bell. People like the i like to ring that bell. Yeah. Well, that's about it for the first floor. I'm going to cut this one off right here.